Ecological witchcraft. In this video we talk about how we can be practitioners of magic while being considerate to nature and the environment. Stick around for our foraging tips and ways to connect with earth energies. Hello, I'm Max Raven. And I'm Cassandra Raven. Together we have over 30 years experience in the occult, witchcraft and magic. We share insights, knowledge, advice and lifestyle tips to make your magic go further and add potency to your work. We are in the midst of a renaissance in witchcraft. Information is being shared more openly now than ever before, leading more and more people to the craft every day. In this modern era of high supply and demand, how do we ensure that our practices are not causing harm to the environment? There are so many companies out there producing witchcraft paraphernalia, but we need to be aware of the impact that some of these items may be having on our environment. No matter what tradition of witchcraft you follow, connection to our planet Earth and the energies that occupy the same space, physically or spiritually, will be a vital part of your practice. Many rituals and workings are based around the idea that we're working alongside and with energies linked with air, fire, water and earth. These elemental energies exist within nature, so if we're asking to, for help from them, we need to build a relationship with them. It's essential, therefore, to be aware that our actions within magic and outside of magic can be detrimental to them. It's important to remember that they were here first. They are the very fabric of the world that we live in. So many people crave connection with the energies of our planet, but don't realise that if we're living in an inconsiderate way, then they simply won't help us or connect with us. I personally am a great believer in making your own tools, harvesting your own ingredients that you use in magic wherever possible. However, not everything will be available depending on your location, and purchasing certain items becomes a necessity. It's always important to look at the green credentials and ethical standards of the items you're purchasing. For herbs, roots and resins, try to buy organic or fair wild, and check what kind of packaging is used. For those of you who choose to harvest your own ingredients, there are a few things you should take into account. Obviously, don't take more than you need. If it's the only one of its kind in the area, then leave it alone. When harvesting, do so in a way that doesn't kill the plant. This can vary from plant to plant, and it's always worth doing some research. When harvesting tree bark, take in short vertical strips, never horizontal bands around the trunk. Using horizontal bands can kill the tree. Do not trample other plants or habitats when trying to get to a particular specimen. Some practitioners ask permission from the plants before harvesting or taking anything. Then there are the obvious things. Don't leave anything behind, such as litter. Try not to trespass. Always close gates. And don't disturb any wildlife habitats, such as dens or nests. There are ways that you can connect and be of assistance to elemental energies in everyday life. The more you build a relationship with them, the more they will be around you, even when you're not casting a circle or performing a ritual. So, wherever you are, always leave the place cleaner and tidier than when you arrived. If an opportunity arises to help animals, do everything you can to assist them. At home, create an environment with nature in mind, whether it's indoor plants, a window box or a garden. I really can't stress enough how important it is to be aware and try our best to care for the environment. Many people use crystals in their workings, as they are easy to work with and require little care to maintain. But to acquire them in the first place, heavy machinery is used to rip and tear up the ground, or unethical hard labour is required to extract them from the earth. In some cases, the crystal and gem industry is heavily linked with more nefarious trades. I personally only use crystals that I have found my collection, if it can be called that, is very small, containing a few quartz shards I found at a disused quarry. While I would like to stress that not all crystals and gems are produced this way, if you choose to use crystals or tumble stones, I would suggest you investigate the source wherever possible. We have a long way to go and a hard task ahead of us in learning to repair damage already done to our environment and trying to change the way we live to avoid further damage. It really boils down to being as conscious as possible and making as many good choices as we possibly can. We are all likely to be damaging the environment in some way. We certainly aren't perfect, 
There are lots of things that we could change and are currently changing, so this isn't a lecture. Comment below and tell us how you have changed the way you work, or ways that you look after the environment or animals. We'd love to hear that. Join the Raven Mystic community on social media and like and subscribe here if you enjoy our videos. Thank you very much. Hopefully see you soon.